Concrete's the most widely used material in the world. For every person on the earth, there's half a yard of concrete produced annually. It's uh, valuable to sustainability. It's valuable to roads and infrastructure. We need concrete structures to sustain the forces of nature when a hurricane comes. We need concrete in hospitals. We need schools. We have no problem having it be a simplistic material of just water, cement, and aggregates to make a sidewalk or a fence post. But we can also make extremely sophisticated mixtures that are high performance and are used for commercial construction. And I think most people don't understand the complexities and all of the things that go into making and batching a yard of concrete, delivering it, taking it to the plant, installing it, having it last for 100 years. Naturally, when we build buildings nowadays, we are very concerned about the sustainability, the energy impact, and, and the impact on climate change. Sustainable development is also about making sure you have natural resources that are available. Obviously, reducing that uh, environmental burden in creating concrete is the future. If you're going to be in the concrete industry, you should get involved with standards. If we don't have standards, then any strength testing is done at whoever's will. So every job would be different. We would have no continuity from project to project or from even um, one town to another. Having that standard agreement, that consensus agreement, is key to getting anything done. Otherwise, it would just be chaos. When you look at an organization like ASTM and you, and you talk about uh, sort of connections between industry, academics, government, students, the consensus process of how the standards actually come to be um, and how changes are made, we're all so interconnected. So you come to agreement through the standards process. Writing uh, standards of, of reviewing standards, coming to, to a, uh, an agreement of what's the right word or what's the right uh, process to, to uh, go through. All of that takes uh, voting and balloting and offering your expert opinion and then having those opinions be voiced within the community. You have a period of time, specifically in C1 and C9, that work in the same week and you meet a lot of people, people that you wouldn't normally uh, be able to interact with. People that read about in textbooks when I was a student were active at ASTM, so I get to chat with them at these meetings, and you learn a lot from that. The benefit is everybody is discussing ways in which we can drive the, the knowledge, the innovation into the built environment. I do not have all the answers, but I do know people who will have those answers. And so that interaction is really valuable we're still discovering things about concrete that, that we didn't know five years ago, 10 years ago, let alone 20 or 50 years ago. It's a constant evolution. And the participation of members, whether they're in Italy or France or Argentina, Peru, or within the United States, it's irrelevant. It's the participation from a global scope that actually makes and advances ASTM standards. And therein lies the, the strength and the, the future, that the adoption of ASTM internationally is because it's truly international.